Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your GOJ News of the Week. The economic signs continue to point positively in the direction of growth, says Finance Minister Audley Shaw. The minister says that for the first six months of this calendar year, the cumulative inflation rate was 2.5%. Remittances are growing again, interest rates are trending down, and employment figures have increased. After 13 consecutive quarters, the economy showed 1.4% growth in March, and we confidently expect at least a similar level of growth in the June quarter. Energy and Mining Minister Clive Mullings says the Jamaica Public Service Company's operations should be significantly improved with the input of Korea East West Power Company Limited EWP. The minister told Parliament on Tuesday that Cabinet had agreed to Marubeni Corporation transferring 50% of its JPS shares to the Korean company. The transfer means EWP will have a 40% interest in JPS. Marubeni's interest will be reduced to 40%. The government retains its 19.9% and shareholders will continue to own the remaining 0.1%. Cabinet will be asked to consider the future of Jamaica's scrap metal trade at its next sitting, including the possibility of a total shutdown. This follows a temporary ban that was announced Monday evening and which takes full effect on July 29. Industry Investment and Commerce Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says a submission offering a number of proposals is being prepared for Cabinet's review. He says the local industry has too many players to account for the generation of legitimate scrap and too many sites to make regulation not overly difficult. I think therefore that the industry, if it is to go forward, needs significant consolidation. And I say if, because I'm not preempting cabinet's decision. A reduction of the stamp duties applied to the transfer of estates is now in effect. In April, Finance Minister Audrey Shaw had announced that the stamp duty would be reduced from 7.5 to 1.5%. The new rate was gazetted a few days ago. The 1.5% can be found now and there are more applications that will be coming because those who couldn't afford 7.5% will afford 1.5%. And what we have got to do now is to work diligently to free up idle assets so that they can get to work to continue the growth in the economy. Tax Administration Jamaica TAJ is rolling out a three-year national compliance plan. It includes developing a revised risk management system and a debt management framework and reviewing relevant legislation. Tax Administration Jamaica is also looking to introduce a phased compulsory filing program and require mandatory e-filing for specific taxpayer groups. Despite the global fallout caused by the lingering economic recession, some 3,000 new jobs have been created in Jamaica's tourism sector since 2007. The Minister with Responsibility for the sector, Edmund Bartlett, says the additional jobs were created in the accommodation subsector. At the end of 2010, the accommodation subsector had 37,000 workers, compared to 34,000 in 2007. Information Minister Daryl Vaz has challenged journalists and media owners to take responsibility for their professional integrity. The minister quoted a newspaper columnist in bemoaning the media's failure to implement its own agreed revised code of professional practice. Now the media buses must move to incorporating it into their operations. More important, the proposed Companion Media Complaints Commission or Council must be implemented without further delay. And government and private sector have teamed up to provide shelter for 14 families in Denham Town whose homes were destroyed by fire on the weekend. With support from the Ministry of Housing and the West Kingston constituency, Astrom Building Systems expects to complete construction on new units for the residents within two weeks. Prime Minister Bruce Golding toured the area on Wednesday with Astrom executives and thanked them for their speedy response. And those were some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolfe.